Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a radical expression. We have the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x, and that is divided by the sum, square root of 1 plus square root of x plus 1, the square root of 1 minus square root of x. Okay, you get the idea. It's hard to read. We're going to simplify this expression. And what do I mean by simplifying? There is no x value. Am I going to plug it in? Am I going to evaluate? Or what, right? So here's the thing. When uh, the question is asking for simplifying, that means you're going to get a numerical value or an algebraic value in terms of x, but it's going to be simpler than the original expression. Could be either one, right? So let's go ahead and find out. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the solution and also show you a graph, which is pretty interesting. And obviously there are some domain arguments which we can get to later. Let's just skip that part, the boring part, and set this equal to a. And then you can also set it equal to r for radical, and then we're going to square both sides. Why? Because we'll get rid of some of the square roots, hopefully, right? Let's go ahead and do that next. Square both sides. And on the left, in the numerator, I should be getting the radicant, such an interesting word. And at the bottom, we have a sum, so we kind of have to square it carefully. We have a plus b lowercase a and lowercase b, and we're squaring a plus b. So it's going to be a squared plus b squared. This is my fa uh, favorite version of the formula, plus 2ab. 2ab is going to be 2 times the square root of this times that. And that's going to be from difference of two squares. We're going to multiply the insides. That's going to be 1 minus x from difference of two squares. Make sense? So in other words, this is what I did. To multiply these guys, I basically wrote it like this, using properties of radicals, and then multiply these two guys using difference of two squares, which is a squared minus b squared, which is a plus b times a minus b. So this is a really important formula, by the way, in case you didn't know, and we get square root of 1 minus x. Make sense? That's how I got this. And of course, there's a 2ab, so that's why we got the 2 there. Let's go ahead and simplify this. This is equal to a squared. And I can clearly see square root of x cancels out, and 1 plus 1 equals 2. Wow, such a huge discovery, right? Okay, so now let's go ahead and copy that down. We got 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x divided by 1 plus 1, which is 2, plus 2 times the square root of 1 minus x. And this is equal to a squared. And this is awesome. Do you know why it's awesome? Plug in some values for x. Obviously, you don't want to plug in like 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever. Something smaller, like 1 half. x equals 0. Let's try x equals 0. We get 1 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 2. So that is going to be 2 fourths, which is 1 half. Great. So a squared is 1 half, that means a is maybe square root of 1 half, but you kind of have to continue plugging in values. This is not going to work, obviously. You don't want to do it infinitely many times. Let's instead simplify it. And this expression simplifies very nicely because you can go ahead and you can go ahead and factor out a 2 at the bottom nicely. See that? And that gives us 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x. And this expression cancels out. Obviously, that's never going to be 0 unless x is complex, right? And we're working with real numbers here, so we're going to get 1 half from here. If you plug in different x values, you would get the same thing. Anyways, to keep a long story short, a squared equals 1 half, and obviously you will, I think, agree with me on this. The original expression is positive, right? Everything is added, so from here we should get the positive solution, the square root of 1 half, which can be written as 1 over square root of 2, or square root of 2 over 2. There's so many ways to write the square root of 1 half, but I like the third one because it's kind of, you know, simplest form, and rationalizing denominator, so on and so forth stuff. Okay, so before we take a look at the graph, what kind of graph are you expecting if I get a constant value? You're expecting to see a constant function, which is a horizontal line, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and you'll be a bit surprised. Yes, it is a horizontal line, but actually it's not a horizontal line. It's a horizontal line segment, right? In geometry, this is called a line segment, or just a segment, because it has endpoints. It's not a ray, it's not a line, it's not a half line, 
which is such a weird concept, by the way, half line. Anyways, um, so this is a line segment. Why? Because of the domain thing. We didn't discuss it, remember? We skipped that part, but let's do that part right now. We have a radical here, so x obviously needs to be positive, right? Because of the square root of x. But we also need uh, 1 minus x to be positive, which implies x is less than 1. Put these two together, x must be between 0 and 1. Can x equal 0 or 1? You can test it out easily, and the answer is yes, it can, because it doesn't make our expression undefined. If it did, we would have to skip it, right? We would have to ignore it. But in this case, it doesn't. You can definitely try that. This becomes a 0, but this becomes a 2. And from here, basically, you get square root of 2 over 2 as our constant value. Of course, as long as x is between those values. What happens if x is not on that interval? Then you get a complex answer, and it depends on the value of x. I believe you're going to get different values. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.